Okay, this is very interesting. Uh, there is a lot of output, so I will show only the default values for the management interface. So in this way, I can see the complete configuration, the running config plus the default values for a particular uh, part of the configuration. For example, for the management interface, I can see that CDP is enabled by default. Okay, the IP address is part of the uh, running config. IP redirect is enabled by default. I can see IGMP snooping is enabled by default and so on. So this is a nice way to, to be aware of the defaults that are there in the system. And this is pretty much complete, completes the first step. So this was just a simple step of system verification. So we are now ready to go to the second step. So step number two, the management VRF. On the supervisor, if you remember, we have the management Ethernet interface that has been designed for the auto band management of the system. It's a 10, 100, 1000 Ethernet port that is directly attached to the supervisor CPU. Now, this interface is placed by default into a reserved VRF, which is there also by default and that we call management VRF. The philosophy behind the management VRF is to provide total isolation to the management traffic from the rest of the traffic flowing through the system by confining the former to its own forwarding table. During this step, we will verify that the management interface is already part of the management VRF. We will also verify that no other interfaces can be part of this reserved VRF and also some basic connectivity through the management interface. So let's see the VRFs that are present in the system. Show VRF. As you can see, we have the default VRF and we also have the management VRF. So let's see what kind of interface is there for the management VRF. As you can see, only the management interface is part of this VRF. Now let's try to add another interface to this particular VRF. Let's try, for example, with 2 slash 1. Interface, Ethernet. As you can see, we only have Ethernet interface. We don't have fast Ethernet, a gigabit Ethernet, 10 gigabit Ethernet. Everything is Ethernet now. And it makes sense because if you think that in the future we will have 40 gigabit Ethernet, 100 gigabit Ethernet, it's much simpler to have just Ethernet there and if you want to know what kind of interface you have you just can see that as part of the Ethernet uh, as part of the interface uh, information so 10 slash 2 slash 1 okay so VRF member management as you can see the command failed because the VRF management is reserved only for the management interface. So now, after we saw that, let's try to reach um, the autoband network by pinging uh, the device that is attached to the management interface. As you can see, the ping here is failing. Why is it failing? Because we, when you want to reach the autoband network, you have to specify the VRF, which in, in our case is the management VRF. As you can see, the ping now succeeds, and uh, the output, as you can see, is very Linux-like. Okay, so pretty much this uh, completes the second step. It was very quick step just to show you the management VRF, the management interface, the philosophy behind the management VRF, how we want to keep the management traffic, the out of band management traffic, totally isolated for, from the rest of the traffic that it's flowing through the system. Okay, so step number three, CLI tips. So as you notice, the NXOS CLI is very iOS-like. This has been done so that our customers don't need to learn a new way of configuring the switch. However, there are differences 
Of course, we believe those are improvements more than differences. One of the main differences consists on, in the fact that the NXOS implements a CLI that is hierarchy independent, meaning every command can be issued from everywhere in the configuration. And probably you noticed that in the previous step. So this is gonna be a very short step to show some of those CLI tip, tips. Okay, so let's see for example config t. Let's see if I can ping from config t. As you can see, the ping is available and I can ping from config t. Now, if I move on uh, an interface level, oops, sorry. Here we go. The ping is still available here. So I can repeat the command. I can also issue show command, show running config from here. Here we go. So totally hierarchy independent. I believe me that is great when you start using an XOS and use this CLI like this, you will have a hard time to go back to the classical iOS and use the usual CLI. You don't need to exit the sub mode, sub interface mode to do a ping, to do a show, running config and so on. That's great. So some of the new things about the CLI is also the piping. For example, show running config. As you can see, we have grab, we have head, begin, count, we can do a lot of things. So just I'm gonna just show you a grab example here. Okay, the grab version, I believe is 2.5.1. Okay, so we are using that version of grab. So let's see a grab example. So I want to see three lines before the matching after the matching line and also i want to see the number of the line i'm printing and the matching criteria is interface manage, ma management zero here we are it's a very simple example something new is also the tab the tab as you know completes the word the keyword you are trying to enter but when you didn't enter anything it's going to show you the option at the point that are available at that point in the cli so pretty much this concludes this step on the cli tips so very short steps to show you that the cli as you saw as you will see during this uh, lab is uh, an ios look and feel and there are some differences we believe those are improvements like the grep, the hierarchy independence, and so on. Step number four, RBAC. RBAC stands for Role-Based Access Control. Upon login, every user gets assigned a role that defines the privileges of the user that gain access to the system. An XOS, through the RBAC feature, provides a very flexible and powerful framework to create ad hoc roles for any type of user. During this step, we will display the default roles, we will display the features and the feature groups that can be used as part of the role. We, at that point, we will create a new role, we'll apply the role to the newly created user, and we'll uh, test the role. Okay, so let's see what are the default roles that are present uh, in the system. Because uh, I'm logged in into a particular VDC, I just see the default roles for the VDC. Right now I'm logged in as an admin, so my role is VDC admin. The VDC admin, admin, as you can see, has access to all the commands within a VDC instance. The other default role is the VDC operator, which has just reading permission, meaning is able just to issue show commands. Her role is a set of rules that define what kind of operations the user can perform on individual CLI commands 